Hello and welcome to All About Boston. I'm Seth McCoy. Joining me tonight is former city councilor John Tobin. He's here tonight. We're going to talk about mayoral candidates and at-large city council candidates. If you're at home and you want to weigh in on who you're supporting, who you like, who you don't like, what issues are important to you, definitely give us a call, 617-708-3290. John, welcome back to the show. It's good to be here. The snazzy new set. I know. Great. It's it's a nice new look. We have a nice new intro. Legendary. Thanks to David, who uh, works in the studio here. Yeah, the entire works. staff here works very, very hard. Exactly. And, uh, including yourself, and thanks for having me on. I appreciate the time. You're welcome. So let's talk about mayoral candidates. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an exciting time in the city. It's, you know, the first time in 20-plus years that people have the opportunity to go and vote for somebody other than Tom Menino. What do you think? Sure. And it, if you go back, it's actually the first time Mayor Menino was actually essentially the incumbent. Right. It was, it was still a spirited race with uh, with Jim Brett and, and others. But go back to 1983. Uh, Way before when, my time. Uh, when, <laughs> when, uh, when Mayor White uh, left, and it was uh, Mel King and Ray mm -hmm. Flynn and Dave Finnegan and mm -hmm. I think uh, Larry DeCaro was in that race yep. and Sheriff Dennis Kearney, and there were just a bunch of folks in that race, and it was uh, that was an incredible time, and so. This time, this is a true, again, I know for the first time in 30 years, a true open seat. Right. And uh, it's pretty exciting, yeah. but it's gotten off to a slow start. Yeah, it's, I mean, were you surprised at how many people actually pulled papers? No, because it's a, <laughs> it's a once in a political generation type of deal. Yeah. I mean, Mayor Menino was obviously the record holder at 20, mm -hmm. but the last, we've had, we've had three mayors in almost in 46 years. Mm -hmm. um, between, you know, amongst Kevin White, Ray Flynn, and, and, and Tom Menino. So yeah. if you're in office or if you're something that's, you're at a time in life when you think you can do this, uh, now is the time. Yep. Because if uh, you wait, well, it could be 2033 before you your next run for mayor of Boston. <laughs> exactly. Do you think that'll happen, though? Do you think the next mayor is going to stay there for as long a period no, of time? I don't. I don't. I just think that... Uh, Mayor Menino came in, has, has, has a system, came in at somewhat of a different time. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think the different pressures that are now on mayors these days, mm -hmm. uh, there's all, believe me, there's pressures on the mayor. Obviously, we, we see that, unfortunately, with Mayor Menino and his you know, physical health, and he mm -hmm. just, he works his job so hard that I think it's affected him in, in his health, obviously, right. and unfortunately. Um, but I think it's a different time with the different social mediums out there now. Mm -hmm. It's not just a couple of newspapers and some TV stations that are, that's where people get the information now. Right. Uh, Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. Facebook. Local cable access. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's all, it all adds up. And so the information is out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really, you can't say one thing in one part of the city. And <laughs> you can't another. manipulate the constituency any longer. It's a lot, it's a lot more difficult. So right. the, the traditional ward bosses and people who ran elections mm -hmm. uh, and knew how to do those things and did the numbers on the back of an envelope and, you know, um, those are, that, that has shifted. That has mm -hmm. shifted uh, dramatically. Right. Uh, so it's just a it's just a different time, and I think that people are going to find that. Uh, and you know, you could have the next mayor of, uh, who gets elected. Uh, could it could be an opening somewhere else for for Congress mm -hmm. or for a state senator or for governor? Right. It's not unusual. Tom Benino was very much the anomaly, right? And that he realized he had the best political job on earth, and you never heard his name floated for other positions. That, mm -hmm. In time, he could have won them, mm -hmm. um, but he, he realized what he had uh, and what he wanted to do, mm -hmm. and he stuck to that. And if there was ever his name out there, it was tamped down automatically. Right. And so I don't know, you know, Kevin White, you know, was almost nominated to become vice president of the United States, mm -hmm. you know, under, under McGovern. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Ray Flynn obviously became the ambassador of the Vatican. Mm -hmm. uh, so people have, there, there could be other openings, but I just don't think... Uh, you'll have, and I don't think for big city mayors overall, uh, right. you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see that, you'll see that trend start to decline. Yep. I almost think that the next person who becomes mayor is going to be the rebound mayor, almost like a rebound girlfriend or boyfriend, <laughs> <laughs> where we've had Mayor Menino for so long, and then we're going to have somebody else, and frankly, the people of the city of Boston might be like, okay, we've had you for four years, who's next? Could be, it could be, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a shock to the system mm -hmm. of, of this city. I think, you know, amongst all the, you know, Mayor Benito's magical traits, I mm -hmm. mean, and he has many, I mean, it's just that people feel comfortable with Mayor Benito. Some people, he's been the mayor since they were, since they were born, since they were eighth grade, <laughs> since they were in 12th grade, since, you know, yeah. and, uh, and I think people, there's a comfort level in the mayor. Right. He's almost like a, 
well, he is a grandfather, you know, but he's almost like a grandfather to the city and that he's there. Uh, he says always, you know, the right things. He's mm -hmm. company. He has the personal touch. And I think, you know, it's just, was he like that 20 years ago when he first took the job? No. He grew into the job and the city grew with him. Right. And he's developed the city. And I think, yeah, I mean, the next mayor is going to, there's a system that mayor, I, I always call Mayor Menino kind of the, the Bill Belichick of mayors, you know. <laughs> He has a system, yep. and it works, yeah. uh, you know, for him and for the city. And then someone else you have to come in as a new, you know, you know, God forbid the coach who comes in after Coach Belichick, and God forbid the person <laughs> who comes in after Tom after, Brady. Uh, yeah, after, <laughs> after, yeah, the quarterback comes in after Tom Brady, and yeah. the person who comes in after Tom Menino. Yeah, absolutely. We have several potential, or some are already certified, and some are potential mayoral candidates who are current city councilors. You were a city councilor. You had once thought about running for mayor. Just before we, I thought about it. For, <laughs> I thought about it for 15 years. <laughs> do you, now that you're not a city councilor and you see that this change is happening, did like a second when it, the mayor announced, did you think, oh, maybe I should just jump back in and run? No, not at all. Uh, I'm very happy where I am at Northeastern and uh, in, in my my side mm -hmm. uh, life at uh, uh, the comedy club and uh, the comedy clubs that we run. And mm -hmm. uh, my boys are five and six years old, and so that was funny. Uh, Flew down. My wife and I and the kids flew down to Florida uh, on the Wednesday. When the announcement, the, the rumors started going around about the announcement. Yeah. We took off out of Providence. We landed at seven o'clock. I'm walking to the, the baggage thing, and I turned on my cell phone, and there was smoke coming out of it. <laughs> and it was just that's when the rumors started flying around Wednesday night. I was up till right. quarter or three in the morning. Wow. It was, it was almost surreal. You couldn't believe the mayor right. was actually leaving, but not one. I did, you know, received a number of texts and people calling. You going? You going? You know. Right. And no, I mean, if it was two and a half years ago. Yeah, I'd be right in there with the pack. Yep. But life changes, and you know there are there are a hundred of me, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, who I, and there were a hundred of me, you know, back in the Ray Flynn days, and there were a hundred, there were two hundred me in the Kevin White days. I mean, yeah. it's just sort of, it, it's timing, you know, right. and it's political timing, and it's family timing, it's personal timing, and the timing has to be just right, you know. Yeah, and right now there are ten certified, and a few others that are waiting to be certified. John Conley jumped in early, jumped in before the mayor made his announcement. Yep. Do you think he has an edge there, or do you think people at this point, because there are so many potential choices, do you think people just won't even take that into consideration? No, well, I think John has, maybe, maybe not with the electorate, but I think certainly John has the edge in terms of uh, he was able to get his infrastructure up uh, quicker than a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. John made the announcement to run, I don't know, back in January, I suppose. Right. You've got to imagine that he was planning that, you know, into the fall. So, yeah. and John's very good with, uh, he's a good politician. He's mm -hmm. good with the numbers and uh, good with, you know, putting people together. And mm -hmm. so he has that infrastructure, whereas, you know, the mayor, I think, took a, the entire city by surprise, including right. John, I'm sure. <laughs> um, John might be sitting back now going, oh, I just wish it was me and <laughs> well, Mayor Menino. Yeah, you always want that, you know, that one-on-one, -on -one, I suppose, you right. know, and instead of, the, you know, climb through the thicket. But I think having that infrastructure, I think you're seeing some candidates sort of struggle with, Getting it, particularly right. candidates who are not at large or, or aren't elected, people mm -hmm. who don't have a kind of a built-in base. It's right. a, it's a, going to be a little more difficult. There are some interesting candidates who aren't elected. John Barrows, who sat on the school Very committee. Very interesting field. Um, Charlotte Gola Ritchie, who was a, an elected official at one point. Bill Walzak, who's sure. a, he's revered in uh, Dorchester for starting the Codman Square Health Center. Oh, yeah. He's got a great story to tell. He's got a great resume. But... The struggle is going to be getting those stories out there because there are so many people in the field, and there are people like Felix Arroyo, Rob Consalvo, John Conley, Dan Conley, who can speak to what they've done in their political careers. You're absolutely right. I mean, here's the other thing. I mean, so the mayor makes the announcement in March, which is relatively late. Right. But I think the mayor intended to run. It's just mm -hmm. that his his legs aren't there, his health isn't there. I right. think he wants to, uh, but he just I think he just he and his family just decided they couldn't do it. So. Right. He announces relatively late, um, and then just when the thing was starting to get a little momentum, um, the tragedy at, at the marathon happens, mm -hmm. and people's attention, rightfully so, focuses on that. And I think still people are just sort of coming out of that, but there's still right. a new feature in the paper every day about a victim right. or a different fund, and, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, and then the other thing, it, it used to be the distraction was the Reds, if the Red Sox were doing well in the fall. That was the best news for incumbents because it everybody's paying attention to the Red Sox. Right. And now these days, mm -hmm. people are paying attention to the Bruins. Yep. And so you know, the, 
The Bruins were on last night till 12.15. So I, I, wait, I stayed up for the whole thing. I'm sure everybody did. Yeah. You go into work today, everybody's dragging around. And so their <laughs> focus is on the Bruins. Fo the Bruins go to the Stanley Cup. That takes it through, right. you know. So it's just with it. And then, and then forget about life, you know, but it, it, the politic, the political side is that people have political fatigue. Mm -hmm. This should be the biggest thing, the biggest story in the city in years. But right. it really, it seems like there's an election it's, it's it's almost like it's the orange line. It's like right. there's one every stop, and yep. you know, and now we're just there's a Senate election. Exactly. We just had the special where Linda Dosinafori was elected. Yep. Um, and the there's special this, for the U.S. Senate is yep. coming up. This, and then the special to fill Linda's seat is coming up. I mean, so it's, it's just there's been a special election every six months in the state. Right. Uh, and it's I think for a lot of people it just gets to be, for people who don't live it and, and are involved in it, who you know raise their families and are working and doing things, it mm -hmm. just. I think it can be a little bit much for people. Well, see, and you bring up a good point, and my question is, well, what do you think will take for somebody to win and to really stand out? I mean, obviously, we're going into September. It's going to narrow the field down to two, but who's going to be? who do you think will be the final two? Hard to say right now. I mean, it, it's going to wait till the field gets kind of set. I think there's going to be a natural, uh, you know, we just say there are 10 candidates now. Mm -hmm. You know, say there are 12, 13 candidates final. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a... There's a natural attrition as you move on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it was first announced, you know, 48 people said they were going to run, <laughs> and then 24 people actually took out papers. Mm -hmm. We're now down to, I think, 16 put their signatures yeah. in, and now that will be whittled down even more by people who actually get the signatures certified. Mm -hmm. And I think there's going to come a time when uh, money is obviously a big factor. It's huge. A huge it's, a, it's a reality. Yep. It's, it's the way it goes, and uh, that's going to be a big factor, particularly coming out of Labor Day when... People are just coming home, and you get that mm -hmm. three-week sprint to uh, the, the preliminary election. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's not about becoming mayor. Right now, is about, like you said, getting into that final two. Right. And then it becomes some of a jump ball yep. uh, you know, going into November. So hard to say right now, but money is definitely a factor, a, a kind of a built-in base. Mm -hmm. uh, not to say that people like uh, you know, Charlotte Golarichi, I think, will be a factor. Bill Walzak, John Barrows, mm -hmm. even though they don't have built-in bases right now, uh, they do have constituencies. Right, and they're Bill attractive. At Cobb and, you know, at, at Cobb and Square, mm -hmm. John Barrows with his work on the school committee mm -hmm. and uh, DSNI. Yep. Uh, Charlotte with her work with both the mayor and the governor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I think, you know, people are looking sometimes for, uh, they're not looking for all the time the politician, they're looking for kind of a business person's perspective of people right. running off a of profit. How would you put those practices into work as mayor of Boston? Mm -hmm. And that's something that especially Bill Walzak and probably John Barris are going to have to be able to articulate and say, as a CEO of this place or as you know, a member of the school committee, this is what I know about schools. This is how I know how to run a, a business. Yeah. And that message has to be delivered quickly to the people. Because as you said, there was a forum actually last night, and you have you know, 10 people on the stage. Nobody can really get an ed a word in edgewise. That's difficult. I mean, it's just, you know, you, by the time people finish their opening statements, you know, it's, it's midnight. You right. Know, it's to, and it's just, it's hard to, they're doing, some people are doing these, these fora in, in st stages, mm -hmm. you know, six people here or eight people here. And it just, right. it gets to be really confusing, I think, for the general public. Yep. I would, you know, most of the, you, you want to, every neighborhood association and people that want to have the mayoral candidates, and that's all well and good. Sometimes I think it's almost better to just go out and knock on doors. Right, exactly. We're actually going to have the mayoral candidates and the at-large candidates here on this show. We'll, we're going to split them up. So if you're at home and you want to hear from candidates, do tune in in the next coming weeks and months because they will all be here um, if their schedules allow. So it's going to be pretty exciting. But one thing I think that is a concern for everybody, and we've talked about this before, is the voting numbers. I mean, mm -hmm. people are just not engaged. So then... You know, not only are you struggling to raise money, but you're also struggling to get people out to vote. And then that could lead to really tight finishes for some people because who's voting? You're going to have the people who are ones, like you and me, which right. a one means they're voting in every single election. Um, a lot of times it's political people like us. It's the elderly. Sure. But other than that, it's like you have to really generate some new votes in order to Pull ahead. Yeah, it's going to be the people who can engage that, what we hear about New Boston all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, those, those particularly young professionals mm -hmm. um, who, you know, live in South Boston. Uh, you know, every time I meet someone who's 27 or 32, mm -hmm. I don't have to ask them where they live. They all live in South Boston, <laughs> yeah. uh, but different, you know, enclaves and parts of the city, mm -hmm. and who are conditioned to, will vote for, 
for Barack Obama. Right. They'll wait two hours to for, vote for president or for a Senate race, but haven't been conditioned to do that on the municipal side. And Robbie Gonzalo talks about this all the time. You know, he says, this is unbelievable. He says, this is, we are the people that people, you can't call and get the president of the United States on the telephone. Right. Well, most times you're a U.S. senator and a uh, few times you're a congressperson, you get a staff person, whatever, but these, you know, municipal officials, city councils and the mayor mm -hmm. are certainly people that you can call on the phone. You can see them down Roach Brothers. You right. can see them down the, the skating rink. You can see them at Jamaica Pond. I mean, yep. these are the people who, uh, that you call the most and have most interaction with who can do the most at the municipal level. Mm -hmm. So how that, who was that person or candidate or candidates who engaged that mm -hmm. kind of New Boston and kind of balance that off with, you know, the seniors and, mm -hmm. and, and senior issues and also uh, parents out there, right. particularly as it relates to schools. Right, because that's a huge issue is the schools. Um, making them, of course, better than they are. Sure. Um, whether or not there should be more charter schools, less charter schools, or the same number of charter schools, it's just, that's going to be a big issue. Another issue will be labor, and Marty Walsh has a good support system there. Do you think that will help him or hinder him? Oh, I, I think that helps him. I think it helps him. I, I, I know that, you know, my neck of the woods in West Roxbury, there's a lot of men and women from labor who are out there who, uh, like Marty a lot, mm -hmm. you know Marty, and you know obviously you have a you have a battle brewing. It's underway in Wood Twenty amongst yeah. John Conley, Dan Conley, Robbie Gonzalo. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget Felix Arroyo is from right. Hyde Park. Right. Uh, so I mean Wood Twenty, Wood Eighteen, Wood Nineteen, yep. uh, Hyde Park, Rosendale, West Roxbury. Uh, so you think that kind of Marty's all by himself <laughs> up there in, in, in Dorchester, but he's right. got Bill Walzak but and exactly. Charlotte Ritchie and um, you know, but and they're labor. all pulling from the same voter. Base in Dorchester, the yeah, progressive. I mean, young. So Marty's going to do. Marty's going to do well with labor. His record. I mean, he, he, the other community, you know, he's going to do very, very well, very, very well with. And people don't often talk about his uh, his work, his work in the recovery community. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You know, Marty has been out there at the forefront. He's got his own story, but he's been at the forefront and uh, has been active and, and helping and saving a lot of people's lives. And uh, that's going to that's going to help uh, bear a lot of fruit for him. You know, mm -hmm. down the road. Just he didn't do it for political reasons. He did it to help because he has right. his own story. But people don't forget that type of stuff. Yeah. So John Conley, Dan Conley. People are going to get confused if they don't know the two candidates. If they're not, <laughs> if they're not usually civically involved, do you think people will be like, "Oh, I like that Conley guy," and then getting get into the polling location and be like, "Oh, is it Dan? Is it John?" Well, it's funny. I see Dan Conley signs. He has Dan in big letters, and then Conley <laughs> in small letters, and then and then John Conley's got John Conley, you know, across the across the uh, the stickers. It's right. funny. It's funny. It reminds me a lot uh, of the. Of the Cahill race, uh, Tim Cahill ran for state treasurer, and Michael Cahill yep. was a state representative from Bel Beverly who uh, ran as well. And that what and uh, Steve Council Murphy was in that race. Yep. Jim Siegel was in that race. Yep. And uh, the thing that really tipped it was Tim Cahill's daughter came up with an idea for Tim for treasurer. Yep. And they make a commercial, you know, and, that was and they it. filmed to the front doorstep, and Bang. It was Tim for treasurer, <laughs> and it's over. And that's what people remembered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. that'll be interesting. Two different spellings, but. Uh, right. Sound the same, obviously, and exactly. so how how they'll differentiate from each other, and and they both live in West Roxbury, right? Which will be it's John, went to, John went to Roxbury Latin. Uh, Dan has a son at Roxbury Latin. I mean, it's just the similarities. <laughs> it's gonna, I think, are, yeah, it could confuse people. Yep. Now, there are so many people leaving the city council now to run for mayor. We have now opened up, similar to the mayor's race, city councilor at large is like open. There's sure. like 13 people certified as of last late last night. 21 people had pulled. The two open spots. Two open spots. Yeah. Michael Flaherty is running again. Do you think yep. he'll get back on? Michael is a good shot. I mean, it's it's all about, you know, if he goes back to, the, you know, the Michael Flaherty of, you know, out there working hard and knocking doors. He, mm -hmm. Nobody knows the numbers of this city better than Michael Flaherty. I mean, right. he, knows, he knows the numbers, and he's got about 2 million cousins, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they're always going to have a great ex extended close family, but they're everywhere. Yep. And... Uh, and so, if, you know, if Michael, you know, goes out there and, you know, I mean, Michael got 43% of the vote running for mayor. Right. Uh, which is a pretty good showing. Exactly. A pretty good showing. So you're going you're gonna to peg him as one, of the, as one of the favorites to get back there. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, Michelle Wu. Michelle Wu. Is who a, is, was out early. Out early. Uh, I, was, I was out before this even broke. With yeah. the, I mean, he started campaigning, I believe, last October. Started yeah. putting it together. Uh, has a pretty good network that she's built already, mm -hmm. and she was active in the uh, Warren races, yep. and, and has a really good personal story right. uh, to tell. And so uh, she's there, but you know, uh, incumbents 
Councillor Murphy, Councillor Presley. Um, then you there's Jack, some... You get Jack Kelly from, uh, from Charlestown, Charlestown, who's the mayor's uh, ONS person. Yep. And very, very well liked in, in Charlestown. Yep. Ramon yep. Soto, who... Ramon Soto from Elderly Affairs and Veteran yep. Services. Absolutely. Uh, who's there. Uh, you get Marty Keogh, who yep. used to work for Peggy Davis Mullen, running out of West Roxbury. Catherine O'Neill. Catherine O'Neill from Dorchester. Oh, yeah, it's a... It's a Gareth Saunders. Yeah, yeah. That's a, was that a you surprise? You get a guy, Gene Gorman, out of Dorchester, yeah. who's putting together an interesting first-time candidate. Jeff Ross. Jeff Ross. Out of the South End. Um, there are some new names. And then you have the incumbents. You have, you have Councilor Murphy and you, yeah. and you have uh, Councilor Presley. Jed Horesco. Some of these Jed candidates. Jed Horesco who ran for? Uh, he, uh, District 7. District 7. And some of yeah. these names have not been certified yet. But right. there are also some new names that were certified. Um, for example, Frank Adivinola, Jr., out of the West End. Uh, Anissa George. She is in Dorchester. Um, and then Seamus Whalen, who's in West Roxbury. And Douglas Wan, who mm -hmm. is in Jamaica Plains. JP, and yeah. these are new names, too. Yeah. So it's... That's kind of interesting, and you, and you wonder, like, I'm curious to hear from them and, and meet them and see what they have to say and what they have to I offer. I think it's great. I mean, it's it's it, it's almost like the old days of, uh, you know, the old at-large nine-person council yeah. when 50 people would run. <laughs> I mean, my Uncle Jimmy ran for city council out of Alston Brighton in 1977, mm -hmm. and he came in, like, 27th out of, <laughs> but it was pretty good. He came in 27th out of, like, 52. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, he came in, uh, you know, he's on the halfway mark, but I mean, uh, but I think this is, I mean, the people that are running at large now, mm -hmm. or even for district, are the people that we're going to be talking about running for mayor right. in eight years. Right, exactly. Or 10 years or 12 years. Yeah. Those are the people, you know? Yeah. And so you have to, and even, if, I mean, very few people who run the first time are successful. Uh, it's the people who stick with it. I was just going to say, it's if you really want it, the first time you go out, if you don't win, you need to, if you really want it, you go back yeah, out. Yeah, you have to go out there with the idea that, you, you know, you're, you're going to win. Yeah. But if you don't, you know, just don't pack up your bags. Don't pack and up your bags. Just stay active and, uh, and and don't yeah. go away. Yeah. And, and stay with it. If it. There's some people who run the first time and lose and say, "I'm so glad I didn't win." <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And they, and they get it out of their system. I'll yeah. never do that again. And that's fine too. Yeah. That's fine too. But I think, I think the more the merrier. Yeah. Of course, I, I didn't feel that way when I was an incumbent. <laughs> you were like, nobody run, nobody run. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's funny because out of all of the city council districts. Only one does not have a challenger, and that's Frank, Frank Baker. Baker. Yep. I was a little surprised at that. That number one, that he was the only one that yep. is going to not be challenged. Yeah. And number two, that um, there are so many other people in different districts running against incumbents. Yeah, I think but, Frank's race was so tough. The preliminary, both the preliminary and the final, was just so tough in spirit. I think yeah. Dorchester might want to take a little break from there. <laughs> and they have a favorite son running for mayor. Exactly. Uh, they have a few, you know. They, right. Like, you know, Marty been the state rep there forever, and yep. Bill Walzak, and so I, in, in Charlotte now. Yeah. Uh, so they have, that's a, the thing. I mean, the focus is on the mayor's race, and so the at-large race, it's even more, the at-large people will never get an opportunity to speak at these uh, oh. neighborhood meetings, because it's all going to be dominated by the mayoral candidates, and that's why yeah. it's just so important I've had, you know, I've had a pe people running for, what should I do? Right. Just door knock. Go out, knock your knock doors. Yep. That's, all, that's all you can do because you're not going to raise a lot of money. Right. Uh, you're not going to. It just go out and knock doors. Stand in front of Roach Brothers. Stand in front of you know yep. wherever the hot spots are in the other parts of the city. Yep. Uh, and just save your money for one mailing right before the September preliminary, and then yeah. if you make it to the next. Don't go step. broke. Don't go selling the car. Don't go remortgaging the house. Don't do anything crazy. Exactly. Uh, but just you can. But running for city council, you can do a lot with shoe leather and the old-fashioned way. Whereas for mayor, I think it gets back to. I think there's going to come a time, you know, sometime in July or August, when if shoe leather is not going to cut it, if you don't have the money to compete, right? It gets hard because a lot of campaigns have paid staff. Yep. Uh, you want to be getting ready for you know getting up on TV and radio, uh, right. targeted. Um, it's going to be it's it's difficult to uh, and, and get your mailings out. May, people forget about the mailings are to do a citywide mailing expensive. costs forty thousand yep. dollars. So if you don't have the money, it just becomes very very difficult. Yeah. So you may start to see people drop and and then you know alliances formed exactly you know, going to the final. And you and I will talk about this again Great. in late September, early October to see where everything ended up and who we're looking at for our mayoral finals Good, and city council. because I'm awful predictions, so. <laughs> exactly. Well, I want to thank you for being here tonight. My pleasure. And I want to thank you at home for tuning in and everybody behind the scenes for putting together a great show. We'll see you next time.